Your books have a huge following in Germany and already here in the UK, where you have many fans of your Inkworld trilogy, the tale of Meggie and her father Mo. In this series, characters from books enter our world when the books are read aloud, and people can be lost from this world into that. Reckless is also the first of a trilogy and also a story in which there's a way of crossing into another world, this time through a mirror. But the mirror world is significantly different from the ink world. In Reckless, Jacob Reckless has been an intermittent adventurer in the mirror world since boyhood. When he's a young man, his brother Will follows him through the looking glass and is himself pursued by Clara, the girl who loves him. Both these stories show the influence of fairy tales. The protagonists in Reckless, Jacob and Will, are named after the Brothers Grimm. Tell me about your fascination with these stories. Yeah, the interesting thing is, Nicolette, that I never liked them. You know, as, as a child, I always did not, I, I never understood what do people like about fairy tales, but I listened to them nevertheless all the time. At, when I was young, I'm 52 by now, so you can imagine two TV programs, mostly black and white, and um, a scratchy LP with fairy tales from the Grimm's brothers, which I listened to at night, lying in my bed and being completely frightened by what I was listening to. So the interesting thing is I didn't go back to fairy tales for quite a while. So I read C.S. Lewis, I read Karl May, which is in Germany huge, I, I read Tom Sawyer, but I for sure did not touch fairy tales. The interesting thing though is, and I think we all know that, is you don't forget them. So they're almost iconic in the images, and of course that, I think, is the reason is that the source is so old, and that in those fairy tales there's so much about human nature and the worst of it, and all its darkness, but also of our history as people. So um, I guess that's where it comes from. There is a harsh side to the stories in Reckless. You imagine, for instance, what might have happened if Sleeping Beauty never woke up. Why so dark? I think I did not go half as dark as fairy tales are, and I think everybody who would reread them would agree. Uh, of course, many of us by now know the Disney version, which of course has nothing to do with the original tales. And what I did is when I had that idea that Jacob is actually hunting things from fairy tales, I of course had to go back and reread them, and I was completely shocked. There's, it was cannibalism all over the place. It was, you know, parents cooking their children. It was, it was such a nightmare that I thought, well, you have to do a nicer version of this or nobody will read it. So in fact, it's not the dark side of the fairy tales that you see, it's the mellow side of it. <laughs> the protagonists in Reckless are older than in the Inkworld trilogy. Did you intend this book for an older audience? I did, in fact, because, of course, what I, I watch myself and I say to myself, you know, 52, your son is 16, your daughter is 21, my children ask for other stories. I feel myself, I've had, lived quite a lot of life. You know, five years ago, my husband died. I moved to another continent. That changes you emotionally vastly. So I already, when I was editing Ink Death, thought, that's not my language anymore. I think I have to leave this behind. But then, of course, you don't find the project immediately that suits it. So when a friend actually gave me the idea for Reckless, I was like, oh, this is a more modern, it's a 19th century, which I never wanted to touch, and suddenly I was completely fascinated by it. Um, what kind of hero do I need? And actually, funnily, Jacob is much younger than Dustfinger. And Dustfinger was always a favorite of the children in the ink world. So the children, in fact, had taught me that actually they don't want a children hero always because they want to slip in the skin of a grown-up. Which character in Reckless did you most identify with? That's easy. Well, that's Fox. Although many people said, well, oh, I think you're also the dog fairy or the empress. I, I may have uh, sometimes layered that in me as well, but um, I think Fox comes the closest ever to me having an alter ego in a book. You said it wouldn't be a trilogy, but in fact five books. Uh, and you're already writing the second. Tell us what's to come, what's, what's happening in the next book. Yes, the next one. First of all, the funny thing is I only know it's five books since I was in Moscow and stood on the Red Square, where suddenly uh, the true villain behind all this unveiled himself. I had no, had, had no idea what this is all about, who had built the mirror and all that, because I was looking for it. I, that's how I do a story. And uh, I, I was standing one night at the Red Square with my literary agent, and suddenly I was like, oh my God. I had no idea, and I have to do this in five books because it's too much otherwise. So yes, I'm in number two now, 
and you will get a first glimpse at where this is going. So number two will be quite important. I, I will go also to Albion, so I have English fairy tales. I go to Lorraine, which is my France, and I do lots of French fairy tale. So not so much grim, but, but those elements. And um, Jacob has to save himself because, you know, I left him hanging uh, in number one. And it's very much about him and Fox, but there will also be a new character who is an Onyx bastard. So he's a Goyle and he's half Onyx and half Malachite. And uh, he's quite a treasure hunter too. So Jacob has some competition when he doesn't need competition because he has to find something to save himself, which I had awful lot of fun with, I have to say.